We come across networks in our routine life in various forms, be it a network of social beings with whom we interact physically and virtually, or a network of products which we use in our day-to-day -day life. A frequent problem encountered in practice is to label the nodes in these networks. For a social network, the labeling can be based on user demographics like language, location, preferences, etc. Similarly, for a product network, it can specify either category or some other aspects of the product. The example here illustrates a network of computer science articles published in various conferences. Many conferences have a broad domain of interest and to facilitate users, it often becomes necessary to categorize the publications of the proceedings based on the subdomain they deal with. This information is often missing or difficult to extract for various reasons. The given network depicts the citation network amongst articles published in different conferences or journals. We use different colors to annotate the fields they belong to. The task here is, given the labeling of limited number of nodes in the network, how to determine the labels of rest of the nodes in the network. Based on the adjacency information, nodes in a network are conventionally represented using adjacency representation. Here, AI is an n-dimensional vector where n is the number of nodes in the network. The jth entry of AI gives information about relationship of ith node with jth node. For a binary weighted graph, this is either 1 or 0 depending on whether the edge is present or absent. While in case of real weighted graphs, it carries the weight of edge if the edge is present and it is zero otherwise. Conventional learning techniques can exploit this adjacency representation for learning a classifier function. Consider the linear classifier perceptron which minimizes objective of the form something like this. If we start with an arbitrary decision boundary, using perceptron update rules iteratively, we get a final decision boundary denoted as W final. Intuitively, jth entry of W gives an idea of what should be inferred if a node is having an edge to node J. Larger the magnitude, the more confidence we have that the node having connections to it will have the same label. However, for nodes like N1, we are still clueless, as it has only connection to N2 which carries no weight. To handle this scenario, we introduce structural neighborhood based classification which emphasizes on classifying a node through its neighbors instead of using node's own representation. As long as the labeling problem under consideration is in agreement with the semantics of the network, nodes in the network are expected to have same labels as their neighbors. This is because of the homophily principle in the networks. To keep things in perspective, consider the previous network where we wish to classify N1. Using homophily principle, we proceed with classification of its neighbors to predict a score and propagate it back to take a weighted sum. The same idea can be extended to its neighbors which gets classified through its neighbors and so on. Networks encountered in practice usually have some missing and noisy links. It is easy to observe that very often the nodes having high degree are the ones which act as source of noise. To illustrate, Consider the friends of these two users on Twitter. From the friends of first user, it is pretty much clear that the users and his friends are more or less interested in same topic. However, it is difficult to interpret something similar from the friends of second user. Based on these two observations, we propose structural neighborhood based classification for nodes in the network. The proposed approach exploits the homophily principle while downplaying the role of high degree nodes to improve robustness. Details of the approach are described in paper which is also available at KDD website. The implementation used is available at GitHub. We will be delighted to have comments and suggestions from you. Thank you.